Oh! Devil! Van Dye the van rushed towards the direction of the panicked voice. As he ran, he thought to himself, isn't this the voice of Manamekali? Why did she come here at this time? What did she see and scream like this? There can't be such a thing as the devil. What will happen next? There was real fear in the voice. Will there be any trouble if we approach her now? Her mother will bite us and eat us. He wants to. Aditha Kari Kalar is mad. I don't know what trick the Queen of Palvur has in her mind. Thoughts quickly appeared and disappeared. He was distracted due to such turmoil in his mind. Suddenly he fell to the ground after being blocked by the root of a panner tree. Stuck. The fallen man managed to sit up and try to pick up his garment. The root of this little tree has done what so many enemies and conspirators could not do. Have pushed us down. Is this an ominous sign? Van Dye the van smiled to himself, thinking that this tree is holding us back without putting us in danger. At that time, mother. Mother. Where are you? A voice was heard. It was Chandramati's voice. I'm right here. I'm near the pond. Hurry up. Said Manamegali's voice. Footsteps were heard. The sweet sounds of the Nupurams worn on the feet were also heard. Manamegali referred to Alec Callum as the small marble pond in the middle of the park near the site. The pond was made in the shape of a lily flower. It had some lily vines and red water vines. There were some flowers at that time. Van the van had seen this lily pond before. He must have fallen right next to it. Fortunately, neither of the women noticed him. Had they seen him fall since it was daylight, they would have laughed merrily and humiliated him. Now that Chandramati has joined Manamekali, he can slip away without the girls knowing. Meanwhile the conversation of the women fell on his ears. Mother! What scared you? Why did you shout like that? Said Chandramati. Shock! Break the wall! Above it I saw something. A figure with a braided head, a beard, and a mustache. Around its neck I'm afraid to say it, was wearing a skull necklace. When I shouted, it disappeared. Said Manamekali. Very well, princess. It is their mental brandy. There is no ghost, no devil. No one can come and sit on such a high wall, said Chandramati. No. It's not usual for such a demon to appear in my mental brand. Yes. The man-shaped Mugan appears in your dreams and consciousness. Chi-Chi. Do you even have a game now? Then when do you play? You wait in the garden in the early evening by the lily pond. The scent of the mulberry blossoms wafts in. But, what is it doing? Just as you are waiting for the mighty prince, the devil with the mustache and beard arrives. You're coming too. Did that devil run away after seeing me? It is a world-famous fact that demons, goblins, and vittles run away in fear when they see Chandramati, the servant girl of the Kadampur Palace. Chandramati, no more of your silly talk. Truly I saw a grotesque figure on the wall. If you don't believe me, don't. Tell me what happened to you. The last thing didn't work, princess. Why? Why? The Prince of Kanchi and the Prince of Kadampur are meeting there and talking. We will see the mighty prince. Maybe they sent him somewhere too, what? I don't know that. Their father, Palavaranthan, has gone to face the Malayan king. I asked I Tump and Kerry. This evening, Kerry Kaler, something burned down on Valid Harriser. He just likes crazy and gets all fired up, then? Don't wake up in my face any more today. Come tomorrow after dawn. He said and sent it. Then where would he have gone? Said Manamekali. He must be wandering somewhere within the walls of this mansion. That's why I said, perhaps he himself disguised himself as a devil and frightened them. No, I know there are many pretenders in this palace. But he is not one who disguises and deceives. That's how poor women like us get fooled by men. So be it. You go and look again. 
it must be somewhere within the palace walls? Tell me to look for Adumbankari too. Princess. I don't like it when I see that Adumbankari, he wakes up and stares. I'm even scared of him. She who is not afraid of the devil is afraid of Itumpankari? Let him go. It is better not to say anything to him. Go and look for him again. Until then. I'm right here. If that devil comes here again. I'll drive you away by calling your name. A faint sound of Nupuram was heard as a sign of Chandramathai's departure. Vandiyadeva, who was listening to the above discussion, had many thoughts in his mind. He wondered who the devil could be who peeked out from the top of the wall. He remembered how Alwarkadian disguised himself as Kala Muga and saved him. Maybe that heroic Vaishnava? Has he come with any important news from Tanjavur? Has he disguised himself so that the people here do not recognize him? Why is Manamegali so eager to see himself? Why does she send her friend to fetch her? He somehow knew Manamegali's state of mind in his case. That's why he didn't get too close to her. He also wanted to avoid further provoking the enmity of Gandamara. However, now she has come to Nandavan and asked him to bring her sitting alone. She would not have embarked on such a daring undertaking unless there was something important to do. Pity. Is there something wrong with her or something? Or maybe Nandini sent her some message. God. Here, everyone in this Kadampur palace is hiding something in their heart. What Manamegali said a while ago is very true. All are deceitful pretenders. Among them this evil woman is caught and tortured. It is not known for what evil purpose the Queen of Palvur has planned to use this girl. Yes, Manamegali must have had some doubt in her mind. She must have anticipated some danger. That is why she seeks his help. Vandiyathevan thought of the help that the innocent demon had once done for him. If she is truly in distress and seeks his help, it would be ungrateful to refuse it. Anyway this is a good opportunity to know the truth. Chandramati is gone, Manamegali is alone. Who saw it? He might need her help again. It would be better if with her help he could leave the palace in which the schemer resided. You can ask her for anything right now and know the truth. Alec was sitting on the marble platform on the bank of the pond. Amidst the thickly spread leaves in the lily pond, the flowers stood up like a few stars in the cloud-enveloped sky. In the surrounding darkness, the white color of the night-blooming amla was well highlighted. Beyond the lily pond the half-blossomed flowers and buds of the mulberry bushes looked like pearls in the blue canopy. Mani Megali who was watching this was startled when she heard footsteps behind her. When she got up hastily to see the figure who had just arrived, she tripped and fell into the pool behind her. Rajakumari. It's me. Saying that, Vandiyathevan held Manamekali. Manamekali's body shivered. Out of natural shyness, she pushed away from his arms and tried to free herself. But she didn't have the strength in her arms then. In that attempt, he fell behind again. Vandiyathevan held her more firmly and brought her to the front. Manamegali made a desperate effort to free himself, let go. Don't touch me. She said angrily. Vandiyathevan left her and said, Rajakumari. I want to forgive you. He said. Manamekali said, why should I forgive them? She asked. For coming suddenly and startling them. You just came. Why touch me and hold me? In the voice that asked Manamegali, it was revealed that she had taken care of herself well. I caught them from falling into the pool. Beautiful. Didn't you show me so much compassion when I fell into the lake and was drowned? You came to save me from falling into this knee-deep pool of water. That's my fault. You have done no crime, all the blame is mine. How is that? You have done no crime. You are saying this out of some anger at me. The other day you suddenly burst into my room from the hunting hall. You startled me even then. I should have screamed and handed you to my father. You saved me from great danger that day. I shall never forget it. Nor will I forget the way they thanked me in return. 
I have never seen such ungrateful people as you. Princess! This is a great abomination. In what way am I ungrateful? Tell me. You lied that you were being chased by murderers. You ran away like a thief without telling me before I went to the hunting hall and came back. Did you say I ran away like a thief? It's wrong to say it's like a thief, it's a thief. Princess they don't know how much trouble I was in. Could they have informed the strangers? Who prevented them from wanting to? It's their friend Chandramati. When they entered the hunting hall, Chandramati came through another door. I hid in the Jaffa storehouse so as not to catch her eye. Then you magically disappeared. No, I went up the stairs, over the roofs, and up the wall. Princess! If anyone had found me that day, the thing I was accepting would have been ruined, they too would have been cursed. How much do they care about this ghost girl? Really worried? So, it's been so long since you came back here? Could you have told me the reason why you ran away without telling me? I was just waiting for an opportunity to. Why sir, just a word. Can't you just look back at me? Sister. I'm not their sister. You are my friend Kanamur's sister, therefore sister to me. Gandamaran is not my brother, he is not your friend. He is a mortal enemy to both of us. Princess. That's what they know. Until a few days ago, Kanamaran was my lifelong friend. Now he is completely changed. Parthibendra is watching when he can put a furnace to my head. Aditha Karakalaro changes from minute to minute. One minute he speaks kindly, the next he burns and falls. When what? I pass the time in anticipation of danger. If I seek them out to pay my thanks in this situation. Sir. I'm so glad you're so motivated to save yourselves. I'm not worried about myself princess. I'm not worried about my life. I'm just worried that I don't harm them. You keep getting worried and melting. Chandramati used to say that all men are liars. Now she's sure that's true. Whatever anyone says is right. I will never forget you as long as I live. I will never forget what you have done for me. Leaving Mani Megali in deep thought, Sir, now tell me what you said again. She said. Tell me a thousand times. As long as I live, I will never forget your help. Vandiyathevan said with determination. What's the point of saying it a thousand times? You have to put in the effort to make it happen, don't you? Trying in what way? Tell me, princess. You will thank me while your lives last? So save your lives first. If not for yourselves, save them for mine. Princess. What is this? Sir. Tell me the truth. Were you listening to what my friend and I were talking about earlier? Excuse me, princess. Oh devil. I heard them shouting and came running. By then their friend Chandramati had arrived. She had to listen to you. Don't you know I sent her to somehow find them and bring them back? It fell on deaf ears. That's why I approached them. Otherwise you wouldn't have come near me. Damn it, what's the point? Let it go. No matter how hard-hearted you are, I don't listen. I can't stand it if they're in danger. Princess. I am aware of my dangerous situation. Is there some new danger coming that I do not know about? Sir. Leave this palace at once. Are you telling me to run away? Don't run away from the battlefield. What's wrong with running away from conspirators? Who are the conspirators? Who else? Can Thamaran has also seen it. I cannot run away from this palace for fear of them. I can't stand knowing that my parents are hurting themselves. Princess. How can you be responsible for Gondamara's affairs? It is because of me that he and Parthipendra seek to harm themselves. If I should suffer for you, it would be my privilege. I would consider myself to have repaid the favor you have done. Nandini Devi was right. Ah! What did the Queen of Pavur say to them? If I ask you to save your life, you will not listen. 
he said that another strategy must be used. Sir! Please come with me. The Queen of Palvur must see herself as something urgent. They know what that urgent matter is, don't they? I know, there's a report that the boat capsized while crossing the Pulvatera Yar shack. I heard that too. You should go immediately and find out the truth about it. In that way, the Queen of Palvur is going to ask you in person. Van Diathavan thought for a while and asked, Hasn't the Queen of Palvur warned you not to tell me all this in front of me? He said. Yes. Then why did you tell me about this? The reason is that my mind is confused. Sir. Until a few days ago, I was an innocent girl. I never suspected anyone. I never believed anyone my friends complained about. Now I suspect everyone, I suspect everything. My face looks like a wake-up call. In a way it's true. Pavur Ila Irani sent me to fetch them. There wasn't a single doubt when I talked to him. Everything seemed fine. When Ipal came, he himself became suspicious. What do you suspect, princess? What do you suspect about Nandini Devi? That he also intends to harm them together. Why has this suspicion come? What harm can he do me? I can't say that either. But his speech and actions are suspicious upon reflection. He often has a long sword in his hand and is talking about something. I do not fear a sword in a woman's hand. Even more. You will be afraid of swords that are eyes in the face. This is the story that everyone tells. Sir. I did not tell you to fear only the sword of Goddess Nandini. Remember that you first came from the hunting hall to my room. I remember well. You said that some of the murderers had followed them. At first I did not believe it. Then I went into the hunting hall and saw that there were some hiding behind the beasts there. I could not then be sure whether they had come to kill themselves or if they had come with themselves. If you tell about them, you must tell about themselves, don't you? I only now realize how much they have helped me. That's why I didn't tell you that now. Just before, Nandini Devi sent me to fetch them. Immediately, I went back to ask him something. He was knocking on the door. Inside, I heard voices talking faintly from the hunting hall. Sir. I'll tell you my doubts now. In the hunting hall. It seems that some people have come and are hiding. I also suspect that they must have something to do with the Queen of Palvur. Vandiyadevan now fully realized the importance of the situation. His instincts kept telling him that something terrible was going to happen today. Manamegali's news confirmed his intuition. Princess. I need you to do me a favor. Tell me what. There is one way from outside the hunting hall through the tunnel. There is also a door through the room where Nandini Devi is now. Besides these, isn't there a third way? Yes, there is a way for the servants to go. That is the way my father used to take new guests to the palace. Princess. Take me that way to the hunting hall now. What for? Who are those who are hiding there? Just to find out for what purpose they have come. I came to save you from danger. You ask to be led into danger. There's always a knife between me. Princess. It's easier to face a known danger than an unknown one. It's even better to face the danger ourselves. I will take you to the hunting hall if you agree to one condition. What is that? I'll come with them, I've got a little knife between me too. Said Manamekala showing her knife. Vandiyathevan agreed to it. Then follow me quickly, she said. She took Manamegala to Deva who crossed the Nandavan. Then she led the way along the side of the mansion through places where the black shadow of the walls was thick. Then she entered the mansion and took her through the uncrowded corridors and corridors. Then, she came near a doorway with a closed door. She made Vandiyathevan stand there and hurriedly brought a hand lamp. Opening the door and shining a light inside revealed a narrow corridor with a series of stairs. Both of them went down like that. After walking for a while in front, the hourglass suddenly stopped and said in a soft voice, Stop. 
It sounds like some footsteps, can you hear them? She said.